Hey guys, we have a transformative week full of planetary transits and we have a bunch going on. Jupiter and Neptune are conjuncting in Pisces and they have not conjuncted in their home sign since the 1800s, 1856 I believe. Mars is going into Pisces this week which should help us take action in a compassionate way and we have the new moon in Libra occurring which I will be making a separate podcast video as I always do for these. The vibes on the graph are rather interesting because throughout the whole entire week, we have a steady stream of social energy. We have a steady stream of just having fun, partying, relaxing, enjoying yourself. That is gonna definitely be the tone this week, even with some of the harder alignments that we have going on. Because mixed in with that, we do have some solitude energy that's popping up, mixed in with mental energy. So from the 11th to about the 13th, we may need some space to ourselves. This is also popping up again over the weekend and it is intersecting romance and the social energy. It's not as big on the graph from the 15th to the 16th. It's a little bit of a peak of that energy, but it will pop back up again where you might just need a moment to yourself, maybe an hour or two to yourself just to decompress. There's also a bit of psychic energy in the air as well. I mean, we are definitely going to have some psychic hits with all this Piscean energy we have going on. And now Mars going into Pisces. So now we are back in big Pisces energy, just like we were in March, except obviously it's a different tone because they're different planets, but it is going to amplify our Piscean themes in our life. So yeah, this should be an interesting week for sure. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe and also share because it does help this channel grow. Also, if you'd like to support the hard work of this channel, you can do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. On the 12th, Mars is going to be making a semi-square with Chiron. So with this alignment, we really need to work on taming our temper. In other words, this is one of those things where our tempers can flare up kind of easily in this energy and it can call to our attention where we need to work on our temper, where our temper might have gotten out of hand and why we may need to work on anger issues. It can definitely be one of those triggering days in that sort of way where our temper does get flared up. And so it's causing us to look at what causes us to react the way we do and what makes us react in a way that's a little bit aggressive. On the flip side of this, this could also cause us to look at where, why we aren't rising to the occasion in situations where we need to be more assertive, where we need to be a little bit more bitey. There are times in life where, you know, Anger is definitely not called for. And then there are times in life where you need to be more assertive. There needs to be a balance. So this could be something where we're looking at where we need to work on that, where we need to step forward, where we need to rise to the occasion when it calls for it and stand up for ourselves. So yeah, energetically, this could be a rough one. And hopefully we're able to work through that because on that same day, Mars is also going to be in a semi-sextile with Pluto, which also flares our tempers up. On this day, we definitely need to be extra mindful on the things that rile us up. We might have to put ourselves on adult time out from time to time, especially if our tempers are getting riled up very easily, which it can in this energy. This is definitely a triggery day. This is a day where people will be more argumentative than normal. This is going to be a day where people are more confrontational than normal and a day of power struggles with others. And you know, with this energy and with all of this aggro sort of energy, it is very easy to get into disputes with people. It is very easy to get into fights. It is very easy to get physical with other people. So you want to be careful when it comes down to this sort of energy. It's not comfortable. And obviously you already know if you've been listening to me for a while, I have to be honest when I see certain things. So you just want to be aware of that. You just don't want to be getting into something that could just turn into like a physical altercation. If anything, try to channel this energy the best way you can. When you have Mars Pluto stuff, when you have heavy Mars stuff, sometimes the best way to channel it is cleaning your house, working out, getting things done. You know, take all that extra energy and channel it into something productive that, you know, gives you some sort of results that you really want rather than something that's going to result into a fight. And, you know, if you are feeling aggravated, if you can wait for the right moment before you respond to someone, wait for the right moment before you need to approach someone or confront someone with something, wait until you're feeling okay or wait until they're feeling more mellow so that way you can deal with this without it being too disputy and power struggly and crazy. Well, at least on that same day, on the 12th, Jupiter is going to make its conjunction with Neptune. And we have not had this in 165 years. This hasn't happened since 1856, March 6th of 1856 to be exact. So this is a pretty special alignment. 
It's very rare. It brings in rare opportunities and hopefully gobs of compassion because we can totally use that with everything that's going on in the world right now with all of the like nonsense and divisiveness and violence and war and just all this uncomfortable stuff. And I'm not saying that this alignment is going to all of a sudden bring world peace or anything like that, because that doesn't seem like that would happen with this alignment. It could, however, amplify a lot of compassion. It could move people to do the right things in a lot of ways and empathetic, be more helpful to their fellow man in some sort of way. With an alignment like this, we are definitely more tapped into our emotions, our compassion, and our empathetic side. So hopefully that's going to be more prevalent as Jupiter and Neptune are starting this new cycle with one another. And this is a new 165-year cycle. So hopefully it's bringing some of that in. Some of the changes that we see could start off subtle. And I'm not saying that the day that this alignment happens, that something will happen but you know some of the changes that we do see it could be subtle and it could be subtle in ways where it has to deal with our faith so there could be shifts going on with that it has to do with our spirituality so there could be shifts going on with that you could feel more open to connect with people on a spiritual level or on a soul level and that could slowly be something that gets integrated into our lives this could also be a time where you're starting to slowly connect with your creative side you're starting to slowly connect with your abstract side you're starting to slowly connect with your theoretical side this could amplify our need for education in terms of going back to school, in terms of higher education. It doesn't always have to be university. It could also be just taking courses or getting certifications in something. This could amplify our need to educate ourselves further because with Jupiter here, Jupiter is an expander and having Neptune around, we could feel this sudden burst of intuition or our gut instincts is leading us to education or gaining more education in some sort of way. This could also usher in a wave of open-mindedness when it comes down to spirituality. People have been becoming more open-minded when it comes down to those things, but this may expand that and this may make it more normal in some ways. And again, this is not an overnight change. This may happen subtly and over time with this new cycle, but this could give some sort of boost to that, to the new age movement which would be awesome because, you know, we definitely need more acceptance in that area. There's a lot of people who still think it's woo-woo. And I mean, there are some things that are woo-woo, but there is a lot of people that think that it's fake. So hopefully this helps in people taking it a little bit more seriously and being more accepting of it. Our focus can go on travel and it can be physical travel. It could be long distance travel. It could be travel of the mind here. And this could be travel of the mind through reading. This could be travel through the mind in terms of meditation, getting yourself in the zone, astral travel, and really just connecting with your higher self, getting on a journey to connect with your higher self and your higher mind. Of course, this does have its shadow side too, being we're dealing with Neptune and Jupiter. And again, Jupiter is an expander. And as positive of an alignment this is, it does have its things. It does have its limitations. It does have its caveats. And so we do have to be aware of being too susceptible to things. We got to be aware of being overly gullible. We have to really truly be aware of not accepting the facts versus our opinions or our faith and our beliefs because this can be amplified in this energy too. And we've been seeing that for a while right now, but this could amplify that. This could further amplify those issues. We also have to be aware of delusions of grandeur and overestimating our abilities. Sometimes this can come in the form of thinking we're about to win this huge jackpot. And so we're betting all of our money on something that we really shouldn't be doing. And it causes financial woe. So you really want to be careful. You want to make sure that the urge that you're having to do something risky is grounded as possible. And if it feels ungrounded, then you probably shouldn't go for it. I'm not saying trust your, don't trust your gut instincts. Definitely do so, but there might be some limitations to that. So just be aware of that and try to go slow and wait for the feelings to pass to make sure that it's something that is substantial and real. So that way you're not losing anything. You just don't want to be going after what you want because you feel like today is your lucky day and it may not be with this because this can amplify, like I said, the delusional parts with Neptune there and Jupiter there and you just want to be aware of that. I'm not saying that in this you won't have opportunities to possibly manifest or things like that or bring something to you or even have luck in this energy because this energy does have luck to it. However, you just want to make sure that you're not putting yourself in a financial risk situation. 
other than that, let's really truly hope and pray that this does bring in some sort of empathy and compassion because it's so needed in this world right now. So let's soak this new phase up. The 12 is a day with a lot of big energy. And again, we have something that's really nice that I'm hoping mitigates all of that martial energy that's going on that could be a bit belligerent. We have the sun making a sextile with Saturn. And this is one of the alignments that I really do love with Saturn and the sun. This alignment happening during that conjunction with Neptune and everything else that's going on with Mars, Chiron, and Pluto, this could get us grounded because this here is healthy ego. So this could put us in a position where we quickly check ourselves on that day and we are taking responsibility for our actions and again, quickly just reining ourselves in so that way we're not making fools of ourselves or hurting other people's feelings or just doing stupid things like that. One of the lovely things about this alignment is your healthy ego is going to go a long way. So if you've been working hard, if you've been doing the right thing, if you've been owning up to what you need to own up to and taking responsibility, this could be a time where you're seeing that things are paying off. This could be a time where you're finally seeing some light at the end of the tunnel after a hard time and after a whole bunch of work. So this is basically one of those alignments where we finally get what we earn. We finally get the recognition that we deserve in certain areas where we've been busting our hump and it's time for us to finally get that pat on the back. This could be that day where you're finally seeing that. So this gives a really nice grounded ego boost and a well-deserved pat on the back sort of vibe. So hopefully this is going in you guys' favor. Hopefully this is coming in the form of some sort of promotion. Hopefully this is coming in the form of a job that you've been working hard to get into or a scholarship program that you've been working hard to get into. And it finally, you finally hear the results of it. You finally get the answer to it and it's favorable. So this is a lovely, lovely energy. Let's hope that these two really mitigate that Marshall and Pluto energy and Chiron energy because that right there is just a damper on the days. On the 13th, the sun is going to be in a semi-sextile to Venus, Neptune, and Jupiter. So this energy in itself is not healthy ego. This could be situations where we fluctuate and we fluctuate either from being overly egoic and being self-aggrandizing. Also, this could be a thing where our self-esteem may feel deflated on this day. So we can fluctuate where one minute we're feeling like we're at the top and the next minute we're feeling we're at the bottom. So this can go up and down. It's just a very unrealistic view of yourself that comes with this. If these planets were separately connecting, like if the sun was just doing the semi-sextile to Venus and then or doing one to Jupiter or Neptune, this would be a completely different animal. But since they're all combined, it does bring in some unrealistic expectations of oneself. It can be a fun alignment, but it's just not a very grounded alignment. It could be a fun alignment in terms of just socializing and getting yourself pumped up. Again, that ego can easily get deflated with this as well. And it does have a tendency to bring people who are kind of a drag, people that can be draining energetically and people who could be obnoxious, which is also resulting in not feeling good. So this energy in itself can be weird and wonky. It has its sweet spots in terms of having fun, but it also has its weird spots in terms of your emotions fluctuating, your confidence fluctuating, and just not being realistic about who you are. So do the best you can when this energy hits. On the 14th, Mars is going into Pisces, which is going to help us take action in a compassionate way. So if you couldn't get enough Pisces energy, we have more Pisces energy. We've got this big Pisces stellium going on, and this is going to further amplify that Pisces energy. This is also because we're dealing with Mars going to serve as an activator for a lot of those Piscean points. And with Pisces, it's a very passive, receptive sort of energy. So a lot of the times physical manifestations don't always materialize right away. And so this can activate certain points within this Pisces energy. And interestingly, this is a very chill Mars. This is the least aggressive Mars. Not saying aggressive things can't happen because it certainly can in this energy. There are things that do happen within this Mars that can actually be, you know, quite upsetting in some ways. For the most part, we get connected to our spiritual side. We feel more motivated to connect with our spirituality and our higher mind, our higher self within this energy. We feel more motivated to go after our dreams in this energy, which is great because again, Within Piscean energy, you can have the fantasy, you can have the dream, you can have the idea and the concept, but the taking the action part, sometimes it's slow to taking action. This would actually be one of those one of those ingresses where we're able to combine the action-oriented side of Mars with Piscean energy and take action on the things that we fantasize about. 
So if you've had some goals and dreams that have just been more so living in your head and in your fantasy land, this could be a time where you're actually starting to take charge of it. You're actually starting to make something happen and put your energy into it. You basically are ready to turn it into something real within this energy. We become driven to do Piscean things within this energy. So again, going to bring up creativity and art. Those things, you're going to be driven by your passion for art, your passion for beauty in this energy. If you're a creator of some sort, if you're a musician of some sort, this is going to give you that extra boost and that stamina that you need to make something happen for yourself. And the expression of this is not aggressive in any way by any means. It's very light, it's very gentle, but it is still going after what you're looking for, going after what you want. This Mars is more introverted, this Mars is more hang back, so even though we can take action under this Mars, we aren't going to be as showboaty under this energy which is another reason why it's not as aggress aggressive. It is passionate, it is an emotional Mars, but it's not necessarily like assertive and pushy and things like that. So it's not gonna, you're not gonna feel as competitive in under this Mars, it takes that extra pressure off, which is always nice. One thing here with this is there is a shadow side as there always is anytime a sign goes into a planet. And with this energy, not as combative as some Mars placements. However, in this transit, this could be one of those things where you know your temper is building up because you are, you're still going to have a temper regardless and it is building up and you know it builds up in a way that comes out either sideways or you know in some ways sometimes you might act in a manipulative way sometimes you may act in a secretive way sometimes you know you could act in a passive aggressive way within this Mars so it doesn't have that like let's go out and have a fist fight sort of vibe but it can be passive aggressive and somewhat you know you're dealing with situations where people might come off a bit sneaky disingenuous and all of that so it's something that you want to be aware of. You also want to make sure that you're actively setting healthy boundaries in this energy. You want to make sure you're taking care of yourself and your immune system because with Mars and Neptune energy, Mars and Pisces energy, it tends to make our vitality a bit shaky. It brings in a bit of susceptibility in terms of vibes or immune system situations. So something that you definitely want to take care of during this time. Otherwise, it could just make for an awkward time period while Mars is in Pisces. So do the best you can when this energy hits and use this to take action on your dreams and whatever it is that you're desiring. On the 15th, Mercury is going to be in a semi-square with Jupiter and Neptune. And so communication-wise, this may be a day where things get misinterpreted. This may be a day where things are foggy and communication, the way someone's pronouncing things, the way someone's saying things might get blown out of proportion under this energy. So try to use your best judgment when you're talking to other people. If you feel like something isn't coming off right, take a moment to make sure you're understanding that person correctly and that you're not misinterpreting things or misreading what they're saying and vice versa. Also, our judgment isn't always the best under this energy too. So if you're having anything important that you need to do, make sure you're taking your time. Make sure you're going through all the details with a fine tooth cone because this could be one of those things where you're missing important details on something that you definitely need to read the details for. So be as thorough as possible under this energy. And if you're able to hold something off until a couple of days when your mind is more clear, I would definitely do so because again, this could be one of those things where you feel more lapsed judgment wise, especially if you're reading something important. And speaking of judgment, Venus is going to make a semi-square with Pluto, which can bring up distrustful feelings in relationships and also something that may not be quite kosher in finances or a job situation. This transit can bring up feelings of suspicion in relationships. If there's been already something going on within relationships, this may be something where you're feeling as though you're having moments of doubt, you're having moments where you're not able to trust your partner. And so it can be result in arguments it can result in going back and forth with someone and you know it's definitely a confrontational energy when it comes to money we may be questioning other people's agendas especially if they're being overly generous and even you know speaking up in situations where we know that someone is holding something over our head materially and we're having to stand up for ourselves so that way we aren't being taken advantage of so yeah it's a hardcore energy do the best you can when this energy hits i'm really hoping that the last few alignments that are happening on the 17th really shift the tone because we have mercury making a conjunction with uranus and venus making a sextile to uranus and this brings in such a good vibe it really just ties the week off it 
hopefully mitigate some of the other stuff that I was talking about because Mercury conjunct Uranus is that light bulb moment, it is that eureka moment, it is that aha moment where you finally have a breakthrough on something that was complex, that was unsolvable in some sort of way, or where you just felt stuck. You really felt like you had analysis paralysis within this energy. So this could be a time where you're feeling like you're having that moment where it's just you're finally able to understand what you need to understand. You're finally having that breakthrough moment. You're breaking out of mental rut and communication ruts as well. So if there's been a communication rut, this may be a time where you're able to actually resolve something with someone that where you were having a barrier of communication with them, more open to communication with certain people. And it tends to go well in this energy. We're going to be razor sharp when it comes down to our intellect. So if you are trying to study something, this may be the time where you're able to really retain it and absorb the information so well that it results in excellent grades if you're going to school or if you're just trying to learn something for yourself or learn something for a certification program, then this could be something that's really helpful for you on this day. And on top of that, Venus is making a sextile to Uranus, and this is the Venus-Uranus connection we want because this one here brings in pleasant surprises when it comes down to our love life, our relationships, finances, career, and things like that, and even our style. This is good surprise when it comes to style. This is not Venus square Uranus, the bad bangs alignment, where if you do something wrong, you may end up with bad bangs or a hair color you don't want or clothing you don't want. This is one of those things. If you want to experiment with your looks or do something fun and funky or set a new trend, this is going to be amazing for that sort of thing. This could bring in an extra dose of luck when it comes down to our financial situations or hearing back from a job. And this could bring in some good surprises with relationships and get relationships out of ruts if there was a rut or just have you and your partner just doing something fun and new and fresh. And if you're single, this could be a moment where you're having a breakthrough within your love life and you're meeting the types of people that you're really interested in. So this is a lovely energy. I couldn't think of a better way to end the week and hopefully, again, it mitigates some of that harder stuff. But for the most part, this is a lovely bunch of energies that we have going on with Mercury and Uranus and Venus and Uranus. Anyway, I hope you all have the best week ever. Later, guys.